and start with the session. A very good evening to one and all. Myself, Mr. Pratik Barve, Assistant Professor at VS College of Pharmacy, extend my regards and wish a warm welcome to all present on day three of the AICT sponsored Atal FDP one week online, one week offline faculty development program on research and innovation ecosystem and academics need of the hour organized by Vivekanand Education Society's College of Pharmacy, Mumbai. A warm welcome to all the participants who are an integral part of this faculty development program. I would also like to take this opportunity to welcome Dr. Supriya Shidhe, Principal Veskop, Convener and Coordinator of this faculty development program. Welcome, Madam. I would also like to welcome Dr. Rajashri Hirlekar, Co-Coordinator of this FDP, Dr. Anita Aire, Organizing Committee Coordinator, and all the members of the Organizing Committee from VS College of Pharmacy. This FDP emphasizes on the concept of innovation, ecosystem, and quality management as the rapidly growing Indian pharmaceutical sector thrives to become a global hub of original drug research and manufacturing. The FDP is focused on providing insights into novel and recent trends in drug, drug discovery, development, repurposing, and formulation. This would enable the faculty to gain technical expertise and thus facilitate keeping students well informed with contemporary developments in drug discovery and development. It is my great honor and privilege to introduce today's speaker to the audience. For day three of this Atal Faculty Development Program, we have with us today Dr. K. Rukmani, Director, Center for Excellence in Nanobiotranslational Research Center, Professor, Department of Pharmaceutical Technology, University College of Engineering, Anna University, BIT Campus, Tiruchirapalli, Tamil Nadu. Uh, Dr. Rukmini has completed her D-Pharmacy from Thanjavur Medical College, D-Pharmacy from Madurai Medical College, where she uh, received the gold medal, University first rank, Masters in Pharmacy uh, from Jadhavpur University, Kolkata, and PhD also from Jadhavpur University, Kolkata. Madam is the first lady from Tamil Nadu to be awarded a doctorate in pharmacy. Many congratulations to you, Madam. She has been, she has been awarded the better opportunities for young scientists in chosen areas of science and technology fellowship by DST, Government of India, for postdoctoral research at Airway Disease and Nanomedicine Research Center in the University of South Florida, USA. Dr. Rukmini has received a grant close to rupees 15 crores. Madam has established DST supported national facility for drug development and national facility on bioactive peptides from milk and also an innovation center. Dr. Rukmini has won several awards and recognitions. To mention a few, Madam is recognized as among top 2% of the most influential scientists as per Stanford list. Madam has also received the Research Excellent Award 2021 from Anna University, Chennai. Madam has also received the Tamil Nadu Senior Scientist Award 2018, awarded by the government of Tamil Nadu. Madam has also uh, received a Distinguished Scientist Award 2016 from the Association of Pharmacy Professionals. Madam has also received the Woman Achiever Award 2010 and 11 uh, from Tiruchirapalli. Madam has also received the Tamil Nadu Young Woman Scientist Award 2006, awarded by the government of Tamil Nadu. And Madam has also received the Sri P.K. Das Memorial Best Faculty Award in 2010 and 11. Dr. Rukmini has also served as an officiating Vice Chancellor of Anna University of Technology, Tiruchirapalli. Madam has attended MHRD supported leadership for academicians program at Ohio State University, Columbus, USA. Madam has also attended Erasmus plus staff mobility for training at University of Edinburgh, United Kingdom. Madam has organized many national and international conferences, workshops and seminars and is the reviewer of many peer reviewed journals. Dr. Rukmini has 28 years of teaching and research experience. One US and three Indian patents have been granted. Madam has been granted the third patent very recently. RTS, congratulations for that, Madam. She has filed two Indian patents and one PCT application. She has mentored 23 PhDs, one MS by research, and nine postdocs. Madam has 175 peer reviewed publications and 17 book chapters to her credit. And at present, 10 scholars are under her mentorship. Welcome, Madam. Dr. K. Rukmini will be giving her valuable insights into the topic translational research 
mind to market lessons from for the researchers welcome again madam and i request you to start the session yeah thank you very much am i audible yes madam very much yeah so very good evening to all of you uh, i would like to thank the management of vivekananda educational society college of pharmacy particularly the principal and the organizing secretaries specifically dr anita ayer for having invited me to share some of our experiences with the faculty under the faculty development program and first of all really i congratulate the team selected for the fdp that is research and innovation ecosystem in academics need of tower so initially i gave the topic like a recent advances in nano formulation after coming to know the scope of the uh, program fdp i thought it would be nice for me to if i present uh, the uh, more appropriate translational research mind to market lessons for the research researchers because we all know that uh, we are in the era of innovation and without innovation we don't have place to enter and uh, this slide is particularly for the areas because many faculty are attending uh, from the colleges of later to university of mumbai and uh, being a strong believer in women empowerment uh, and also like a supporter of research so i would like to say they what are the areas in which i am working so that if anybody is interested they can collaborate and also they can use the facilities available with us so mainly i have been working in the area of the drug delivery under that a kind of a lipid based metal based and a peptide delivery systems and a, we have be, we have got one project with the drd gwalior then vaccine stabilization and my third patent also filed uh, like last week in the indian patent got and indian patent filed in the area of the vaccine stabilization also so these are my uh, research areas and these are the patents granted and two of my patents actually they have been supported by the industry and the technology has been transferred and the phase one clinical trials have been completed so I, in my talk i would uh, give the overview of the what is translational research and what are the things how you have to qualify what are the criteria to be followed and uh, and also with uh, case studies and finally what are the facilities available with us so i will end my talk and later on we can have the question answer session so so translational research the name itself is the very self explanatory so whatever we do it in the uh, research in our lab so how could be it is translated to the uh, societal purpose so what you do like we are taking any project or anything but with a thought process even it is a uh, smaller big how it could be uh, have a incremental development and how it could add value to the already existing system so that it could be serving the society so that's what the it transforms the scientific discoveries arising from the laboratory clinical or population studies into the clinical application since all are from pharmacy or other from other faculty also like especially life sciences you could understand that how it could best uh, translate to the practice so if you take uh, translational research again it is a cyclic process so from the basic research we are trying to see the what are the concepts the proof of concepts and understanding this proof of concepts and how it could be translated to the patient oriented research and from the single patient you could how the patient outcome how you could optimize the medical practices and how you could be uh, translated to the a uh, more population based and again whatever the understanding or other things so through interventions how best this could be again analyzed and overall it could be translated to the societal purpose so this translational research as i said from the basic biomedical science it's not like whatever your chemistry or electronics whatever the area so the application should be translated to the society so the first whether your concepts works or not so that you have to see and whatever the activities like as per specific experiments broader experiments that what are the activities you have to develop so that you could come into a conclusion of the outcomes and whatever already existing one how you can compare these things and this how this clinical effectiveness knowledge could be uh, 
translated to the improved healthcare of the society. And if you see the, in the case of the translational research, it can be called as lab to lab or form to fork or bench to bedside or mind to market and investigator to investor. And, and it is a highly challenging one. It's not a simple one. And if you take this uh, principle of translational research, it is not a neither simple or non linear. Very importantly, it should be, it should start with the unmet medical needs of the unmet, unmet medical needs. Of course, whatever the needs of a common man from the day to day practice. So it is, uh, especially since we deal with the medical field, we say unmet medical needs or otherwise, whatever the needs, there is a translation. And this, Translational knowledge is not a static one, it is dynamic according to the changing uh, scenario and changing needs, uh, technology changes, and it should be able to respond to the new knowledge like that, that should be designed. So in the case of the drug discovery and delivery, we know pretty well, it starts from discovery to toxicology and phase one, phase two, phase three clinical uh, and ends with the goal. And wherever the uh, different phases, you get some uh, results or whatever the knowledge that could be interven and again it is a repetitive process. So in the case of the uh, new drug discovery, mainly it is for five fundamental extrapolation. So we have to have the physic. First, the important thing is whenever we say the depends upon the physical chemical properties of the drug as well as the uh, like a disease or the objective for which it has to be applied so application so from the physical chemical properties to the biology and it has to be taken from in vitro to in vivo animals and animals to healthy human volunteers and then from single doses to multi doses and from healthy volunteers to patients so very importantly we know all know that even this correlation of the in vitro in vivo correlation is like we get very good results in the uh, preclinical phase but when you, once if you take it to the uh, human volunteers, they may be different. So that is the part very, very important that how you are going to develop a system to the, that will suit the needs of the human health. And if we take the translational research, the, it's, it evolves from basically the Bedol Act, that is a, in the United States legislation, that was amendment happened in 1980 with the intellectual property arising from federal government funded research. So they allowed university to pattern research discoveries. So the, it was a very kind of a system potential to create wealth for the universities. Of course, now uh, the, our government of India, as well as individual state governments also encouraging and supporting to the, uh, uh, to the greater extent make in India. And we as a, uh, faculty members, uh, we can start our own startups and uh, there are uh, clear cut guidelines or there. So that way, uh, this is the basis for these things. And why do we need to go for a uh, translational medicine? Because it is very cost effective and you can shorten the duration of trials. And uh, there are benefits of research to the clinical medicine and how we can, what we know and what is the available. There is a big gap between the reality and this thing. This gap could be uh, minimized or shortened using this translational research. And also whatever we do, like earlier we say like a, either Publish or perish now patent and also this again uh, it is not only the patent this is commercially viable patents and because it should be kind of a uh, commercial availability should be there then only that patent because it's again filing a patent is easy and again maintenance is uh, difficult or we all know so this uh, because of this translational research new new diagnostic and therapeutic tools could be uh, supplied to the common use. And if you take the mind to market pathway, so first we have everybody have an idea. So this idea will be sharpened through our research. And at the concept of idea once it is proved, so that can be like a, this level, either the startup firms and R&D firms come into picture, they do the research and development. Also, we as a university academic teachers also, we do that thing. And then at this stage, the idea could be Translate, transfer to the company or otherwise it can be further developed by the larger companies through production, manufacturing, distribution and to the market. 
and we normally like in a teaching career once the phd is obtained when we feel that it's of course once the phd is the passport to the entry to the research level so when we do like as a teacher we do research we do publish we get grant and that individual transfer career ambitions are over but very importantly whatever we do research that has to be a translator so the our attitude should be in such a way that we should address the unmet need and not to address like a re, uh, again rethink rewinding the wheels already existing so what is the when the inventions will succeed so when you can convince these three part your invention succeed the technology issues business market factors and intellectual property challenges so these three are important even if you are very technologically strong if there is no market for that or if your ipr could be challenged then that will end. so so you have to uh, have a kind of a uh, succeed in all these things technological issues and market potential then it would be easy so here the uh, as a researcher as a teacher you are, you are all researchers also so when we we have to think of the whatever the innovative processes and outcome value so i am happy that we is doing really great job and they have the fracture and gable uh, industry sponsored unit a center of excellence also there so this whatever we do it is uh, it's kind of a innovatively we have to think and also we have to encourage the students like when these are the students students with so if you see the developed countries and developing countries very importantly in the developed countries at the undergraduate level itself this research is, is being given uh, great attention great impact is there and also they are uh, they start uh, startups during their undergraduate itself so whatever the students idea that should also be taken care of so when we were started doing that thing automatically uh, we developed the process or either the process pattern or the product pattern and it could be uh, bring name and fame to the university as well as that could improve the uh, total image of the institution as well as the person so here when you see this thing there are as i said science technology business ip regulations are involved in that so the science began so earlier we say that interdisciplinary research and also later it is multidisciplinary now transdisciplinary so beyond the uh, disciplinary framework you have to break this barrier and then you have to work with the disciplinary among different disciplines and you have to give, bring out the product so when you have a idea so there is this is a uh, commercialization potential scorecard so you have a idea so how whether if my idea would be uh, good or not so how you do know so let just uh, give score for your according to this of course this you can take it as a uh, kind of a tentative one and you can have so this is if you fulfill the unmet need then uh, it is a very good score so we know like during covid uh, every company is trying to bring out a, a vaccine that is a very big need of the hour and then other otherwise it is already there you are going to have the uh, produce it at a reducing cost because you know like so many companies are involved in the vaccine research everybody bring out with a new technology or otherwise but uh, economical way so you can have the reducing the existing cost with equivalent performance or improve the existing performance overcome the lacuna and very well very importantly we say for your idea it is novel it can be protected and the ip could be protected and again once if it is novel automatically it fulfills the regulatory requirements and uh, you can get the ipr also and availability of the complete portfolio like it's like a, um, you have the complete specification and also you have uh, it could be extended to the broader range then it, it will have more uh, visibility and the market technology adoption is very easy the availability of raw materials and ingredients is good and you can have the aggressive market so these are the uh, kind of the uh, template even if you have idea so whether by idea fit into how so if you have a maximum score automatically you can think of that your idea could be a 
uh, translated one part. So this, you have, so the technologies are changing rapidly. So whatever these uh, technologies, so when you, when you create a complete specification, then you, you could, should be able to convince the technology changes. So, and also changing priorities are changes, regulatory requirements are changes, and demand and buying capacity is changes, regulatory need and availability of alternate tests are changes. So it's like you have to fulfill this idea, as I said earlier, like through technology, through science, and also through your demanded supply. So if you could uh, convince this thing, if you could have the data, complete data falling on each criteria, then it could be easy for you. And uh, like the pattern could be either the product or the process, the translatable. So if it is a product, it would be more impactful, less impact, and product, it should be user-friendly. Or for example, the process, it can be kind of a transport distribution system is different. And the product, it is field tested process laboratory. There you have the POC. So you, for example, you have the disease diagnosis for the product. You can have the process for characterization. And this is uh, the process means it should be technologically more demanding, it can be technology less demanding, but at the same time, it should be kind of economical, as I said, equivalent performance at a low cost or better performance or uh, there is no uh, product at all. So you are going to fill the gap there. So initially you have to do the uh, technology landscaping. So whatever, whatever your area, you have to understand your area in which you are working. What are the technological trends? What are the very important subjects of research? And what are the emerging research field? Where the gap is there? So that is uh, very important. So even if you work on the tablets, what are the new, well, now many tablets are coming. So how you can fit into that and whether uh, it could address the uh, larger population and it has a demand or not. So technology wise it has to be, and please avoid reinventing the wheels. So, and also you have to watch your competitor. Who are your competitors? Who are the players in the market? What are their technology? How your technology is superior or on par with the other performers? Who are the key players are there? What are their pattern portfolios are available? What are the technical strategies they have followed? How your technology is going to be a, a different one from the uh, your competitors? So that has to be taken care. And you have to survey third parties patterns also. So what are the patenting trends? What are the threats there? What are the infringements? So these are the, so initially you have to do the, uh, a complete technology landscaping to know whether your uh, patent, your idea could be translatable. So in the case of the business, it's of course, uh, like whatever you do, it has to be, uh, technology has to be transferred to the company or thing. So the company will come forward only when it has the commercial value. So whether, there is a clear need or there or not. What are the features that differentiate you from the competitors? And very importantly, use the feedback from potential customer and end user. And again, you have to have the uh, experienced industry persons and the qualified partners to commercialize your product. And in the case of the intellectual property, you have to evaluate whether you have your uh, novelties there and you have to have the file a provisional patent and uh, bring the complete fortification, complete requirements or complete specification for patentability and how uh, it is your, what are your claims? They call the, how your claims could be enforced. That is very important because uh, we know like uh, when you have, you have to go with the techno legal terms and also the claims is very important that will have a uh, complete fencing of your uh, inventions or the protect your own idea. So, in the intellectual property, you have to see all these things. So this is the uh, stepwise work plan for the technology development. So is like from market, what is needed? So you can do, you have to do the market to mind. So now we say that a reverse pharmacology, what about this? So thinking backwards, market to mind. So you as a third person, you just be like a third person, criticize your post questions in your research area. Identify the priorities, do a technology landscaping, and do a freedom to operate search. 
then do the science and very importantly as faculty we know it is it's not an easy thing you should have a dedication and perseverance you may attempt a number of failures but again you have to have a perseverance to come out and whenever you get you with a with a preliminary results you feel that your hypothesis you are your gut feeling is that it is it is something good something novel then immediately protect your eye science through ipr and do you, now it is a win win situation so collaborate with the people with the, with the industry other and satisfy the regulatory requirements so these are the uh, step wise work plan for the technology development for the translational research so so far i have given the like platform bodies translation and how we have to so maybe i say some of the case studies for where we have done the work so the first case study is the effective skin care with herbal exfoliant so we know that uh, our skin is being continuously exposed to the environmental toxins and other dust and thing so this is the left side you could see these are the uh, damaged skin and this is the normal skin so here stratum corneum is thin and hydrated so there are new skin cells they are very healthy and full and the pigments are corrected and supporting skin structure is strong when it is being exposed to so many challenges in day to day automatically the stratum corneum is thick and dehydrated and the skin cells are misshapen and disorganized and you could see the excess melanin so that causes the uneven pigmentation and the collagen collagen and elastin fibers are weak and damaged so these are the things happening so now you know like cosmetic area is a very big uh, commercial thing so these uh, herbal exfoliants are nothing but they are the cleansing formula they are used for the treatment of sorry yeah so these are the uh, enriched with herbal ex uh, extracts and other micronutrients and uh, so they can penetrate deep into the skin and they have the nutrients antioxidant and microbial properties and they re-energize the skin so these are the actually you can just apply and you can peel off and do so what we have taken so cyphomendra betacea this is a tree uh, tree tomato it is available in the hilly areas these fruits are being used as a raw fruits and uh, uh, they have been used for the uh, dietary uh, like a uh, coloring purpose and the fruit contains vitamin a c e and all and there was no reported medicinal value and the, this is being used as a skin colorant by the tribals of the nilgiri hills and another thing this we know that is in our daily routine we use this is the uh, green gram um, and this phaseolus munga so it is a very good source of the uh, starch protein fixed oil and uh, this is being used as a skin care agent in here so when when we have done this work at the time there was no 100% available like a, a totally a natural exfoliant is not available in the market so a complete herbal formulation without any synthetic additives was our and it should be easy to for, formulate and apply better cleansing effect economical eco friendly this was our objectives so we have done completely phase one plant collection authentication we have done the extraction isolation phytochemical analysis cytometer potassium and for for both the things and all be formulated we have done completely the physical chemical evaluation filmogenicity evaluation microscopic evaluation and we done the evaluation of the formulation by stability studies exfoliation skin sensitization photoprotective activity hypertonic scar management and antioxidant anti microbial of course even for the uh, biodegradable things so you know like uh, the closest possible model for the uh, skin formulation the pig skin the pig skin was taken and you can see this is the skin before the treatment and uh, the pores should get expand and after the treatment in the pores could should close down otherwise it should not keep open to attack the things so you could see that before the treatment and after the treatment 15 minutes the pore size is increased and after treatment 30 minutes and again it has been closed and uh, this is the skin sensitization test so in order to, if you go for the commercialization automatically you have to compare with the uh, closely uh, related marketed formulation so we have taken that i am this is a marketed herbal based distill and this is our herbal exfoliate and uh, it was like there it was that there was no 
uh, irritant sensitization. So it causes the test. And uh, we have done this hypertrophic scar treatment. So you know, like after the wound or after the immunosis, we get the scars. So these scars, uh, like uh, because of mainly the increased the levels of hydroxyproline and the histamine levels. So in this formulation, we have done with the two groups. One is the preventive group and the curative group. So you could see that this is the unwounded skin where the hydroxyproline levels are 3.65 plus or minus 0.1. And in the preventive group and the curative group. So here you can see that uh, also you have to see, you have to treat with the plasma treated also. So uh, like uh, this is a plasma treated. So in the case of the placebo treated, uh, these uh, levels are not uh, reduced. Whereas in the case of the sample treated, the hydroxyproline levels are being reduced to the closer to the normal values and uh, in the case of the histamine levels also and if you compare both the preventive and the curative group it is it is again it is uh, happy to note that in the case of the preventive group the effect was much much better than the curative group that means this herbal exfoliate could be a, a kind of a um, thing for the uh, scar management and not only scar management even for the uh, like a fair complexes in improve also so this and also we have done with the uh, like UV test also whether uh, sun protection effect is there or not. We have done with both with the preventive group as well as with the curative group for the eight weeks. And so in the here in this particular case study, we could see that a complete keratinization within 20 minutes we could have done, and the collagen protection level was much decreased, and there was a uh, UVA, UVB type 290, 310 nanometer, 320 to 400 nanometer, that the erythromogenic effect and melanogenic effect was there. There is complete protection was there. And the histamine hydroxyproline levels have been reduced. So you could see the uh, slow proliferation of the collagen. And uh, again, we have done the antimicrobial activity. It was effective against bacteria and fungus. And also nitrogen oxide uh, free radical scavenging property was also there. We buried the thing and bio, it was found to be biodegradable. And uh, uh, we have a thing that it has, can work on the skin cancer also. So we could see that a, herb, a complete herbal skin exfoliate enriched with the fl flavonoids can penetrate deep into the skin. So since our, whatever the objectives we stated, we could find that thing. So we published papers after filing patent and uh, it evolved away. And also we got a patent that is herbal exfoliating composition compressing Faisalus Munga and Cyphermentary Betesia, and it got a yeah, national award also, that is Professor S. P. T. Rajanis Raj Rajan Endowment Award for the best outstanding patent file in the field of biomedicine. And our, uh, and of course, this particular patent we are discussing with a Delhi based company for taking into the commercial use. And our next study is the design and development of self non swing drug delivery system for ISO 39 with enhanced oral viability and improved stability. And we got the patent granted, novel and stable pharmaceutical composition of vitamin A. So you know that there, there are different types of acne. And for this acne, uh, the isotretinoin, it is uh, the drug uh, approved in United States for its therapy. And uh, But problems with the existing formulation is it is completely poorly soluble. So poor bioavailability and delayed response was there uh, pre particle size there was batch to batch variability was there and it was highly unstable decomposes in the presence of light and uh, atmospheric oxygen these are the problems existing with the uh, existing formulations so in the case of you could see the prior art so there was no proper release of the drug so they have not significantly reduced the toxicity of the compounds and also the only the maximum drug release was 50 to 60 percent at the end of six to 12 hours and also since 50 to 60 percent only delivered the they have been loaded with a high drug concentration that leads to the increase in the toxicity of the formulation and also they used antioxidants and stabilizing agents in order to protect and this uh, again uh, there is a need for the development of the formulation which overcomes the drawbacks so these are the drawbacks of the earlier prior art. So what was our objective was 
to formulate and optimize a stable and novel composition of isotretinoin for an enhanced oral viability, to improve the Tmax, Cmax, and reduce the inter and intra subject variability, and to make an easily scalable process release. So with this, we have done the ternary phase diagram. We have selected oil surfactant and co-surfactants, and phase was selected, and a novel composition comprising vitamin A analog, a fatty material, a surfactant, a hydrophilic co-surfactant, along with the pharmaceutical acceptable excipients was developed, and the particle size was found to be uh, less than 200 nanometer. And these are regarding our vitamin A analogs. Preferably, vitamin A analog is isotretinoin, and uh, it may be either a base. So we here we have used a base and fatty material. Uh, preferably, the fatty material may be an essential oil, either alone or in combination with other components such as glycerol triacetate. And surfactant system, you have to select a surfactant. <clears throat> uh, it may be preferably hydrophilic and has a high HLB value. Most preferably, the surfactant may be polysorbate 80. And co-surfactant, since the surfactant has high HLB, so co-surfactant may have a preferably a low HLB. So this is our uh, selection. And the pharmaceutically acceptable excipients like a solidifying agent so you can select from a high molecular weight polyethylene glycar, polyethylene black coal polymer or mixers. And uh, we have selected from the group consisting of PAG other thing. And sweetener can be selected from different range sucrose, sucralase, sugar. And this selected was the sucralose. So the composition was such that the physical stability was the formulation could be maintained and it could prevent the precipitation of the drug. And also, it, it can be a, you can make it as a capsule or solution or emulsion or spray or drop or ion. So this, uh, so we prepared a self nano emulsifying system and we have completely characterized this thing through this, all these parameters like self emulsifying, precipitation assessment, drug loading capacity, emulsion droplet size, turbidity measurement, viscosity, transmission. Of course, we have to do a complete analytical profile to convince your promise. And also we have done the stability studies as per ICH guidelines, subject to the stability studies at 30 degrees, 65% relative humidity, and 40 degrees, 75% RH. So samples were withdrawn. And we have done the in vivo studies. This is the phase one clinical trial and open label single dose randomized to treatment to period two sequence for one week period. So we have done with the six healthy volunteers. So you could see this is solubility of isotretinoin in different uh, oils and different surfactants and different co-surfactants. So you could see that it twin spans different surfactants. So you can see the cremopore and the gelicide. You have the uh, equal performance and peppermint oil and, and the triacetin has good performance. And this is the nano emulsion and micro emulsion we developed. And this is a turn image. And these are the effect of solidifying agents on the in vitro release of a drug from. So we have uh, done so many uh, trials. And, um, and this is very important, the in vivo studies. So I said, this is the poor solubility and the poor availability and batch to batch variation. So here you could see, this is our test and this is a reference formulation. You could see Cmax, it is 303 in our case. So you could see the Cmax is multiple fold increase. And very importantly, you see this thing that is a, uh, this uh, range. In the case of the Tmax, it is one point one hour, whereas in the case of the reference formulation, it is three hours. And the range is here, one to 1.3, here, one, 2.6 and T half, it is 12 hours, 17 hours. Again, the range, if you see the close range, that means the batch to variations is much reduced and here you see. So whatever the objectives we stated, we could see it's not in the preclinical, it is in the human volunteers, we could see the result. So an optimized uh, SNETS formulation consisting of isotretinine, peppermint oil, transcutal oil, and PEG 6000 was successfully developed with the increased dissolution rate, increased solubility, and they showed a higher pharmacodynamic potential, and also stability studies shows the stability of the formulation, uh, as with the peppermint oil, stably increased. And this, what are the advantages of this invention is, you could see higher drug loading capacity in the solubilized form compared to prior art formulation. And also, 
in the absence of the stabilizing agent it is stable for 6 months at accurate stability storage condition as per icg and it has low impurity content of less than about 2% total impurities at the end of self life and the composition has dissolution greater than 80% in less than 15 minutes and the manufacturing process is simple and does not involve any energy intensive process like milling homogenization or microfluidization so this this is was uh, like um, this uh, this patent was uh, indian patent was granted and uh, this patent has been actually it is a totally industry supported jam jam pharmaceutical this technology has been transferred to them and another very important patent is it is a joint venture with the national dairy research institute uh, and nowadays like uh, where they commercially viable so it's like fortification of the food and milk is a very important thing more than poverty because of the uh, malnutrition the children die so very importantly we have to go with the fortification of the milk. and very again these micronutrients one of the micronutrient for the this antioxidant is the resveratrol so we have developed a method uh, for the uh, this diosomes we prepared with the resveratrol and uh, this this is a joint project we got a 4 crore project from bst along with the national dairy research institute and we developed this so this is this invention is related to the nutraceutical especially and here we used this as ferric acid as a stabilizer for this formulation and prior art there are uh, chemically like micronutrient nutraceuticals are uh, many compounds are therapeutically good but they have very limitation low and resveratrol it's a, a very good uh, anti accident good with a very good range of health benefits but unfortunately their bioavailability of resveratrol is less than 1% so so it is non encapsulation of resveratrol is very important and if you take uh, prior art of course people all done with a nano encapsulation of any biological material has been done and you can go with a carbohydrate and protein based delivery system but that could lead to the dehydrates so lipid based system is very important and this lipid based system again you can go with the emulsion but it has low stability and susceptibility for oxidation you can go sln again risk of recrystallization is high you can go nlc and nlc again for the food product liquid based food product it is restricted because of its oxidation of the lipid and liposomes they can comes encapsulate water soluble lipid soluble amphibolic material but the production cost is high so because of these other uh, delivery systems we have chosen the niosomes because niosomes are uh, cost effective and very stable delivery systems and uh, these are the previously reported also in the uh, their niosomes but uh, so you can see that niosomes earlier prepared under using extruder under continuous nitrogen flow which makes costlier and another person has developed the material but they have used the cholesterol so that will limit their applications and also in another study they require costlier chemicals in another study and the stabilizer dodecanol may show conceivable effects on health on long term usage so these are the niosomes with the food products they develop but in our case we have the scope of our invention it's not only restricted not only to span you could apply to the twin surfactants also you can enter up vitamins minerals nutraceutical drug and you can enter up hydrophilic compound and a combination of hydrophilic and hydrophobic molecules and also uh, it's like a, uh, like we we used a steric acid as a stabilizer so it could be prepared with a thin film hydration technique and uh, and you can uh, like um, so this uh, size exclusion chromatography can also be used for the same and so these are our scope of our invention so we prepared the niosomes we have optimized the niosomes and the uh, sonication parameters have been fixed and this is our preparation so just like this you can take the swing 60 of course this is usual flow diagram for the resveratrol using the uh, thin film hydration technique we have prepared the uh, thing and also these are the size potential term image and you could see the when you put the resveratrol it's completely insoluble we could prepare the uh, thing and also these are the various characterization parameters of the niosomes and the anti accident activity was done with the resveratrol niosomes in raw 264 7 cells 
and you can see that A is the uh, cells induced with the LPS and B cells induced with the LPS and uh, C like induced and uh, C is the induced with our formulation and D is the ribosomal for blank niosomes and D is the with the ribosomal niosomes. So we could see that a complete uh, antioxidant activity could be seen. And also this is the in vitro release of the free resveratrol and uh, ribosomal nanosomes. So, so all these things uh, we have seen that we could see the average particle size ranging from 185 plus or minus 11.4 nanometer and the nano encapsulated reservoir so controlled release of at a simulated intestinal condition and the accident activity was higher and no significant difference in scavenging activity was there so uh, the so that the present method of preparation of reservoir loaded niosomes using nano ionic surfactant and steric acid stabilizer to produce a nanoparticle with a suitable characteristics and functional properties for a potent application for food fortification. And advantages of this invention is the steric acid, which is very much natural, non-toxic, that could be used as a stabilizer. And C uh, formulated nanovesicles so a high entrapment efficiency. So stability is confirmed, and functional property was also confirmed. And this it could be scaled up to the commercial level. So, of course, uh, this commercial potential. So the method of niacin preparation is simple, uses inexpensive chemicals and steric acid for stabilization. So we avoid use of cholesterol and it is very economical and it has tremendous scope for the commercial application. So this we also publish in the Journal of Molecular Liquids. So our uh, next thing is the one US patent. It is again, the technology has been transferred and it is supported by the uh, Jum Jum Pharma. So immediate release of composition of acid label drugs. So you know, like uh, uh, one of everybody, like every one of us will experience this gastroesophageal reflux disease. It's a, it is frequent backflow of the gastric contents. And uh, uh, you feel like uh, esophagitis, it, is, it produces very big discomfort in the chest. So actually what was the uh, problem is, like uh, when we when we have we, we were doing this thing, a market this proton pumping inhibitor they are very good uh, effectively, but unfortunately they they are highly unstable at the gastric pH. So you could develop a, a immediate release formulations were available, but they added for each and every dose thousand eight hundred and fifty million close to two gram of the salt was added to maintain the neutrality. So if you think about this much of salt, that will definitely it will lead to the uh, contradicted in the cardiac patients. So what we are objective is to develop an immediate release formulation to counteract the disadvantage of entry coating and currently available IR formulation. We use minimal quantity of uh, alkalizing agent and to improve the Tmax and all. So why we have taken Epantoprazole? It is the only uh, FDA approved drug for nocturnal acid control. So we have done the pre-formulation studies, completely determine the acid neutralizing capacity, drug excipient compatibility, uh, disintegration, dissolution, dissolution in, uh, and we have developed three formulation, core tablet filled in a capsule containing buffer, core tablet embedded inside the buffer core, and pellets and buffer granules filled into the capsule. And we have evaluated the method, analytical method, drug content, in vitro release, in vitro release by varying dissolution parameters, and comparison of the in vitro release, delayed release, and immediate release. And we also we have gone for in vitro release by illustrating micro environmental and macro environmental pH. So our uh, formulation work on the micro environmental pH concept, whereas the other formulation macro environmental. So this is the pH profile of different uh, buffer combinations. Of course, this is the in vitro release of the immediate release dosage form. For the tab in cap containing different of, and you can see this is the uh, immediate release and delayed release formulation. So this is uh, our system. So you can see within uh, like uh, immediately almost 100% release was there with uh, less time. And especially this is the in vivo studies. Again, this is the phase one clinical studies, human volunteers. We have done with uh, 12 participants. So this blue line is our 
pantoprazole our developed formulation and pantosol is the uh, commercially available formulation so you could see how they smoothly this uh, post absorb this phase there is a zigzag and you could see that uh, c max is uh, t max is at the earliest and c max is higher and you could see. so this is the uh, results of the in vivo so the unique non enteric coated immediate release formulation of pantoprazole uh, produces more rapid absorption and decreased time to peak plasma concentration and we use less than 50% of the alkali buffers to protect the active drug from degradation a concept of creating a macro environmental ph and this macro environmental ph creates uniform release of the drug within 15 minutes without being degraded and it is a patient compliant simple cost effective scalable and robust formulation so we got a yes patent and we got a best innovation award for this patent with a cash prize and this technology has been transferred to jamjum pharmaceuticals of course as i said earlier food fortification is very important uh, so children they born with a neutral because of the uh, folic acid deficiency you can have and permanently disabling or fatal so more than poverty malnutrition is the biggest problem so <clears throat> the micronutrients vitamins and minerals are essential for many functions so these are the like um, you could healthy babies good performance for normal brain growth or healthy aging so vitamins are minerals are very much needed essentially but even though it is in small amounts it's very much essential so they cannot be produced by the body have to come from the diet so people are starting the bio fortification also but uh, due to regulatory and other reasons most of the developments did not make it to market yet so that was the reason we this because our drug delivery techniques are same so now uh, in two areas you could attract funding one we got a funding from indian council of agriculture research also uh, one is the agriculture so we we are developing the smart pesticidal formulation for increasing the Uh, agriculture productivity other one we got from the uh, one project is for agriculture productivity that is from dst another project we got from the icir is uh, for the fortification of the milk with the micronutrients so apart from our national facility with the dynasal dairy research institute we got a research project also so this is the uh, like we developed the indigenous cow milk based novel food so you know like a milk a yeah, very essential component of human diet and uh, there are two types of milk a1 and a2 a2 type cow milk is very healthier and it is excellent nutritional source there are very good uh, health benefits potential benefits there are many bacteria peptides are there in the milk so this uh, but fortification is uh, very important what do you mean by fortification it is a practice of adding vitamins and minerals to the consumed so you can have milk or dairy bread or what whatever the food ranges you can fortify the milk so this Uh, like who says do billion people worldwide suffer variety of micronutrient deficiency so it is very very essential when you apply at this this uh, a value addition of thing it could lead uh, good results good funding and you can uh, pre- bring the commercially viable products also so we have taken alpha lipoic acid fortified cow milk as a nutritional supplement for anemia so to develop uh, lipoic acid polymeric lipid nano capsules fortified milk for alleviation of anemia as a nutritional supplement so we developed the polymer lipid nano capsule formulation and fortify with a a2 type cow milk and we evaluated the sustained its behavior and histological so why alpha lipoic acid this is it possesses antioxidant property the enzyme glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase is a very vital role in maintaining the integrity of erythrocytes against oxidative stress and damage so the decrease the condition of g6pd may lead to anemia so lactic uh, that is alpha lipoic acid loaded nano capsules fortified milk may expected to modulate g6pd enzyme deficiency and it may expected to act as an erythropoietin adjuvant by its redox mechanism thereby uh, hemolysis may gets prevented thereby it can be used as a therapy for the anemic patients so it is expected to produce improved rbcs through food fortification and it enhances the glutathione levels in cell lines that cells including rbcs and it was effective against cancer so with this 
hypothesis be developed at the alpha lipoic acid nano capsules so this is our flow chart they have prepared and also this is the schematic representation of fortificase lipoic acid with the a2 type milk and uh, we have characterized it with the size zeta potential antioxidant activity in vitro release ir all the things and also for anemic anemia was induced and also we have uh, countered rbc levels so the rbc levels uh, treated so in more remarkable increase in the rbc's hemoglobin hct and wbc compared to other and also antioxidant potential was also increased so we published in the applied nanoscience and of course in our lab apart from this we also work on the cubosomes sln smart responsive or herbal based and green synthesis base so cubosomes are uh, like uh, nowadays if because of its high loading capacity cubosomes are playing a vital role in the drug delivery system so we developed the methotrexate loaded cubosomes with the increased skin permeation for topical treatment of rheumatoid arthritis you know rheumatoid arthritis again it is a, a big problem and uh, it affects almost uh, like a, about 40 uh, women feel or mostly affect 1% of the world population so the but methotrexate unfortunately solubility is the problem poor solubility bioavailability low bioavailability is a problem uh, even though it has potent an anti inflammatory activity but so lipid cubosomes has been attempted and we use poloxmer 188 as a non cyanic surfactant as well as so here you could see we developed the methotrexate loaded cubosomes we have done the skin permeation study and skin irritation potential the all the completely we have done the study and we then the analgesic effect of uh, methotrexate cubosomes also so the methotrexate cubosomes were topically applied over right for two hours this year you can see that a before treatment and the after treatment even could see that uh, uh, diclofenac is better than the diclofenac treatment also so this and we have done the hematological parameters of the methotrexate so this rbc count and uh, wbc count has been increased so you can see that and we with compared with the saline blank isomers and diclofenac gel and the mtcs and this uh, uh, retra path thickness measurement has been done and also fatc labeled mtc is topically treated so increased photon count compared to the control rates so developed mtc showed better therapeutic effect with improved mt permeation upon non invasive skin route with less frequent dosing and also many have been maybe working on the phytosomes so we have developed the uh, phytosomes also so gfl are reference phytosome loaded intranasal gel with improved nasal permeation uh, for the effective treatment of alzheimer disease so you know like uh, uh, this particular creeping herb that has a very good anticholinergic activity that has been traditionally used in india to improve the memory and the intelligence but that has not been scientifically investigated so far so this uh, many studies have reported that triterpenoids and flavonoids have memory enhancing property so this whatever the phytoconscience this present in the permeation of phytoconscience the important problem is the uh, though we are working on traditional change important thing is the many of the phytoconscience may be overly soluble and may not cross the blood brain barrier so this phytoformulation has been developed and uh, in order to permeate through the blood brain barrier for the alzheimer disease so this is the we used methanolic extract of that gfla uh, and uh, with the spc that is child phosphatidyl choline or alpha phosphatidyl choline with a stoicitin uh, and 30% of phosphatidyl choline with the co-solvency we prepared the um, extract and the phytosomes and then you could see that it with the Uh, xyo studies have been done with the nasal permission so you can see that um, phytosomes with 
through seep mucosa, which is mounted in a Frank's diffusion cell. So here you can see that a, a GRME permeated microgram per ml with the permeation enhancer and without any sensors. Of course, with the permeation enhancer, uh, the uh, permeated was higher. And this is the opti optical microscope image of the nasal mucosal tissue for the permeation study of the mitosome. Okay, so this is with the transcutal, you could see here, and how it is being permeated that image shows. And also, uh, we have done the repurposing of drugs, like a repurposing, you know, limifantrine. It is an anti malarial drug, it has been taken for the like lung cancer with along with the calcium phosphate nanoparticles loaded lipidic cubosomes. So, here you know, like a Calcium phosphate nanoparticles, limifantrine with the calcium phosphate cubosomes were prepared. At pH 7.4 normal cells, the calcium phosphate remains intact, whereas at the uh, pathological site, the, where the pH would be 4, the calcium phosphate dissociate and release the drug. So we developed this formulation and uh, we completely characterized this formulation. And also, we have done the <clears throat> with a uh, chorea allantaic, a chicken chorea allantaic membrane. We have seen how it could uh, uh, prevent this uh, new vessel formation, other things. And also, uh, one of the another important area where industry has shown interest in our study is the novel age appropriate formulation technology. So, here, like a uh, we have adult dose, like, uh, uh, but uh, there is no uh, kind of a, a designated dosage forms for the pediatric dose. And we normally we go with the, uh, breaking the adult dose like uh, tablets into. So it is uh, now the regular European Council, other agencies are recommending and promoting these age uh, like a uh, pediatric uh, specific dosage forms. That is the reason even now. Uh, like in NUS also is working on the mini tablets, especially for the uh, either as a precision medicine or for the kind of the pediatric dose. So we have developed the oral flexible tablet formulation for pediatric and geriatric patients. Now so Volansabin and Ariprasone. And also we have uh, published a wood review in Indian Journal of Pharmaceutical Sciences. And also we developed the solid oral flexible formulation as a yeah, novel platform technology, and uh, that could same platform could be used for the geriatric, and uh, so it's it's completely. When we presented this in the AAPS conference, many industries were shown the interest. In this. And also, uh, dual track targeting uh, delivery systems also be developed. So in the case of the methotrexate and minocycline. So especially in the case of the rheumatic arthritis, there. A immune system is compromised and they are more susceptible to infections also. So normally these patients are uh, prescribed with both with the uh, antibiotic as well as the kind of the uh, methotrexate. So why not together? So we develop methotrexate and minocycline loaded nanoparticle for uh, effective treatment of the rheumatoid arthritis. And also uh, we have worked on uh, seriously, vigorously in the various kinds of stimuli response delivery system, uh, uh, pH responsive or thermo responsive or uh, like um, redox responsive. So we have developed the atrial nutric peptide conjugated chitosan redoxan impact copolymer nanoparticles as pH responsive area for intracellular delivery of pernicholone. So intracellular delivery, so pernicholone we have taken and they developed. And also uh, we have taken 5-fluoroiracil as a model drug and synthesized the cytosine conjugated hydrogen impact for redox responsive and also we have so we have uh, done uh, published a good number of papers in the similar responsive delivery systems so we know these are the uh, synthesized pH responsive copolymer and synthesized and also we have taken model drug pernicholone we have done in vitro studies in vivo all cell culture studies and this is impact for the uh, thermo responsive delivery systems and redox responsive thermo responsive so here 
you could see thermo responsive this is thermo stable and this is thermo responsive delivery immediately phase transition will be there adax responsive and we have developed gwd in niosomes this paper has got a number of citations high and also we have done alpha bisola loaded solilipinone but so we worked on different kind of nano systems uh, depending upon the drug as well as it so we have developed the alpha bisola loaded solilipinone particles at an which alpha beta aggregation and uh, in the neurotoxicity we developed and we publish and also we have done the methotrexate loaded solilipinone for the treatment of carcinoma and we developed composition loaded polymer stabilized nano emulsion also we done and uh, this i said already that pgh response the limofentrine with calcium phosphate nano particles and also we touched up on the metal nano particles we work gold nano particle especially here hyaluric acid co functional gold nano particle complex for the targeted delivery of metformin again you could see this is a repurposing as well as the metal nano particle so metformin anti diabetic drug the patients which are on the treatment with the metformin they are found to be less susceptible for the liver cancer so that was the clue so we developed the hyaluronic acid co function gold nano particle for the metformin and we have done complete study and also uh, we have done some green synthesis also like ultra fast synthesis of stabilized gold nano particle using aqueous ferrous extract so this is within 15 seconds this uh, nano particles have been prepared and the, the video was attached so it was published in rfc advances and also we have done like not necessarily that uh, uh, plant uh, like how uh, you could develop uh, uh, in the case of the green synthesis how the plant extracts or the gums could be used as a stabilizing agent so that way we develop synthesize and characterize arabic gum capped gold nano particle for tumor targeted drug delivery done and of course um, like a, uh, i would like to stress upon this what are the facilities available with us how you could use so we have lcms ms it is a micro q3 top it is a high end model in our region and we have animal imaging system perkin elmer it is the fourth installation in tamil nadu and we have hptmc soon Uh, in our latest project we are going to add automatic method development also and this is uplc this is dsc and this is ivc and uh, here uh, this is again now a particle this 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 is very important like uh, people like say like cancer is the major cause and copd is the major cause for third cause for the death chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and for this copd cigarette smoke is the very basic reason so either smoke smoke and the rural population they have been exposed to the uh, like um, wood uh, fire and all so and again because of industrialization we have been exposed to the dust so copd so we have a uh, inhalation exposer this is cyrac inhalation exposer we have a standardized model and it is uh, we have both whole body plethysmograph and inhalation exposer as and it we are the only academic department having the both of these so here you could see here they block my so normal mice cannot withstand the cigarette smoke for a uh, long time so this uh, special breed black mice j67 could uh, bear the cigarette smoke for period so we have so we have the system and we have published papers also this for this uh, copd here both the models we have like a passive smoking and active smoking so here the tray the whole body is being exposed we have no solely model where the active smoking is and also we have multi mode microblade reader and a spray dryer inverted fluorescent microscope automated cell counter we have and as i said it is the airway mechanical analyzer whole body plethysmograph so here uh, you could uh, see the asthma you can evaluate asthma as well as cough so uh, so completely respiratory we have unique respiratory pharmacology lab where we can explore we are exploring different kind of the herbal based formulation and also 
uh, how the uh, the I suppose improper practices of the uh, pesticides how it would affect the pathophysiology of the animals that we are testing and also we have imported cigarettes for this study that is standard cigarettes research grade cigarettes have been imported from university of kentucky and we are trying to validate the our own uh, domestically available brands also with the standardized cigarettes and we have a small animal anesthetizer and also we have all the minor equipments we have uv visible digital autoclave gel documentation ice breaking machine and uh, very importantly we have uh, uh, this uh, recently like uh, we have established a innovation center that is EDIA, we got 2.5 crore from government of Tamil Nadu. Uh, EDIA, Entrepreneurs Development Innovation Institute, Anna Business Innovation Research Foundation. So we got a uh, like a innovation center. It's like a one-stop shop. So you can do whatever uh, translational research that could be possible by this innovation center. So these are the technologies we developed. And we regularly conduct uh, programs, hands-on training program with uh, our sophisticated equipment, DST sponsored program. And this, uh, very importantly, in the case of the innovation center, uh, we could go for the, uh, when you go with startups, every faculty or every student can give a startup. When the startup culture is there, then automatically government gives many concessions and these things. So government procurements are for the procurement, you need to have experience, turnover, EMD, all these things are exempted. And a patent will be granted and the fast track thing, income tax exemption. And instead of physical inspection, self-certification is necessary. And the foster exit, earlier the exit was more than four years. Now you could exit this thing. So we have, and the government is uh, very well supporting these incubation centers. So now we cannot claim that uh, no funding is not there because if the funding really, if the project is good, very well, the government is support. There are many research parts also there. Seven IIT, IAC Bangalore have research parts and bio clusters are there. And Startup India, this is a online hub. It is largest virtual incubation platform where you can register and you can get the benefits. And if you register, so we provide a co-working space, we provide the infrastructure, we get the connectivity, like A to widget, like legal support, marketing support, and also patenting support and a mentoring system. So whatever, as an individual or as a startup or as a uh, medium level company or large company. So for all the stakeholders, our uh, EDA, Anna Business Incubation Research. So right now we have 16 incubators housed and um, recently like uh, we have Onomics, that one of the incubating team, uh, big challenge award also. So they, they have got at various level, they've got the innovation awards. So right now we house 16 incubators, incubators in our innovation center. So whatever your ideas you can share with us, collaborate with us through our incubation center, you can come out. And uh, I acknowledge the support received from ICMR, Biotechnology, EDI, DRDO, the, all these things. And uh, uh, importantly, I didn't touch upon the stability. So vaccine, so the DRDO Gwalior has supplied the plague vaccine. We developed and uh, we could see for three weeks this, that was stable at a room temperature. So uh, we filed a patent also recently. On 8th of August, we filed a patent, provisional patent on the protein stabilization, the vaccine stabilization also. So this is our group. I acknowledge my team, especially the scholars. So thank you very much for your patient listening. Thank you. Thank you so much, madam. Yeah. It was a really insightful session on translational research and a lot of uh, your work based on nanoparticles in detail. And as a part of it, we have a lot of questions from our uh, participants. I would yeah. like to take uh, one uh, at a time. Uh, yes. First question uh, by Mr. Babar Thakkar. Uh, as a pharmacologist, 
how can we move forward with patentable research yeah as so a pharmacologist you can develop newer models new animal models you could develop and if it is new alternative animal models also you could develop because i know like uh, in india uh, like globally there are uh, five centers for alternative animal testing in bharatidasan university there is a uh, center there so they develop like 3d models or this is where the pharmacology knowledge is very much essential so as a earlier for a drug discovery kit you could develop a product for earlier evaluation of the uh, all the whatever the mm, disease model you are very well versed okay thank you madam uh, we have another question from vedika madam if you observe that water extract of some herbal is showing activity then how do we go about extraction of the active constituent kindly suggest some method for extraction no again extraction of so once if you extract then you have to go the packed guided fractionation to get the isolated product so see means extract are the isolated compound because extract is already done no? so uh, extracts nowadays super critical fluid extraction is uh, finding a big role so people have attempted maybe uh, with uh, actually we have a chemical engineering department here so we work closely with the chemical engineering department for the extracts and all so they have a infrastructure to so so that is one thing and also depending upon the extract and the kind of extract they have to so super critical fluid extraction could be a good choice hello no you were you were now your voice is breaking hello i suppose uh, there is some fluctuation at pratikshar's uh, end okay. we'll continue with the questions am i audible madam yeah yes madam very well ah, yes 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 so the next question comes from dr indira para mm. she is asking how much is the drug loading of methotrexate in lipidic cubosomes and how much oh, is the bioavailability uh, bioavailability uh, okay let me refer my paper Yes, this is a very specific question. Yeah, very specific. Maybe give me a minute. Can I take my paper and answer her question? Yes, madam. No, no issues. We can take up our next. Uh, uh, Indira, madam. Indira, madam. Uh, I'm interrupting, uh, ma'am. Uh, are you interested in figure, or you would like to know in what way cubosomes are helped? Do you want to know the conceptual uh, explanation? Because these figures you can also dress from madam's uh, publications. Uh, actually, my doubt was uh, like that because Mitotri said already the dose is very low. in oral 2 mg and 5 mg so this is a very nice uh, thing idea that cubosomes and all only the uh, the, uh, the question is about the drug loading so if it is a 2 mg and 5 mg and oral okay and the viability yes the oral viability is also uh, is a challenging thing okay but in cubosome that is a lipidic and the skin permeation has been done in that paper and also i was uh, very much interested that what could be the drug loading capacity of that cubosome if it is already the low dose so yeah how much and that what were what are the further risk about the uh, toxicity if the dumping occurs no actually we have done these toxicity studies and also mm-hmm. we are but specifically i don't know this maybe i can pass on the paper to you like we have done in vivo studies uh-huh. also Madam, if you could share it with uh, us, our coordinator, we will share. Sure, it. sure, sure, brother. Sure, sure. Yeah, no problem. So Thank you, ma'am. Be, Thank you. Your questions will be answered through the paper. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Madam, okay. our next question is coming from Dr. Harsha Katpaliya. She is asking mm-hmm. if you can suggest a stimulator responsive polymer for buccal fill forming systems. Buccal fill. Suggest a polymer. no 
we have done actually whatever the polymer we have actually synthesized in our lab because initially we started with a commercially available polymer and then this all the polymer whatever the ph response redox responsive that polymers we have synthesized in our lab and then completely purified and then one of one of the student really good now he is doing postdoc in israel he has done the work buckel delivery we have not done the work okay thank you madam our next question is from again indira madam uh, her question is one of the micro immersion case study where particle size is less than 100 ml and nanometer then is it necessary to check the turbidity measurement and what is the stability of the micro immersion and the shelf life what we developed that micro immersion Uh, the one which you have developed, the case study, there you mm -hmm. have mentioned the size is less than hundred nanometer. Yeah, so, in the self nano emulsion drug delivery system. Yes. yes, in one of the system. Yes, actually we have done the turbidity. Actually, we have not shared the complete data because the patent is available in the website also. Like complete specification is available. So we have done the turbidity assessment, and uh, we could see the stability also for six months. It was very stable. Okay. There was no. uh significant agglomerations was not there thank you madam uh, the next uh, question comes from dr harsha katpalia madam is asking can we include lipoic acid in nano formulations of drugs which cause hemolysis in g6 pd deficient patient to reduce the adverse effect repeat the question the question is uh, can we include lipoic acid alpha lipoic acid nano yeah. formulations of drugs mm. which causes the hemolysis in g6 pd deficient patients so that the adverse effect can be reduced uh, it has to be studied because yes. we have not feature scope only yes. like we have done we have seen but we, uh, we have not what is the level of g6 pd we have not measured so with a hypothesis that a g6 pd deficiency it could cause anemia so whether Uh, this could increase. So with that only we have done. We have induced the anemia in the animals, and we have done complete blood parameters. But G6 PD levels have not been measured. So in that case future studies need to be done specifically to answer this. Thank you, madam. The next question is from myself only. Uh, that is, you explain about the herbal exfoliate, the yes. skincare herbal exfoliate. Mm -hmm. So, did you conduct any in vitro exfoliation study for this formulation? Yes, plimogenicity, okay. removal, in vitro exfoliation. We have done with the I said now like uh, in vitro. Yeah, with the uh, slides we have done like uh, your petri plate slides. We have done. And uh, X fiber we have done with a uh, uh, pink skin, and also it shows a good potential for it has the potential for skin cancer also. Okay, okay. so you have the uh, pink skin study which was uh, shown in the slides uh, that was an X fiber pink skin. Yeah, study. X fiber. I mean that's what now each one has lot of data. I just yes. summarize the results. Yes. Your each case study was itself a session actually, but you have condensed it and you have. Yeah, actually, each work was my PhD. Oh no, no, your PhD work. Yes. Thank you, madam. Next question comes from Dr. Itishri Vaidya. Madam is asking for gold nano particles from herbal root. Could you get exactly a pinpoint capping agent? Capping agent. Capping agent. Uh, yeah, capping agent again. i cannot pin point because whatever we have done two three even the brinjal we have taken something so that was working and we could see that uh, we have analyzed the concentration of the extracts also from maybe to um, i think 10 microgram to 50 microgram or 100 microgram and that was at a lower concentration it could act as a capping agent again it depends on the different drugs madam like we cannot we have a range of capping agents that you have to use with the golden nano particles or whatever your metal you are choosing the so many messages are there regarding the very informative session in the chat box the next question is from uh, mrs jyoti lahane madam is asking is fortification of the food to deal with malnutrition is better choice than administering multivitamin mineral supplements and if yes why 
no actually it's not that uh, you can go with the multivitamin separately or thing is like uh, especially in the case of the children uh, instead of going with a different thing now fortified food would be the better choice because of economical reason okay because you are we are differently you are formulating the multivitamins or the minerals as a separate dosage form we are giving you are giving the food as a separate so instead of that uh, like because uh, milk and all it is being consumed daily so value added products would be uh, kind of better than this uh, i won't say better or something like it is also uh, in the economic point of view it would be better than separately administering and in our case also uh, since we have done with the ndri and the, uh, we, we have extended our study like further results have been obtained and uh, it shows promising results and uh, they are going to have the along with the industry we are going to uh, like only method is patented we have done other studies also so i feel that food fortification is the major area and uh, in one of the uh, team also in dbt i think trust area is the fortification uh, thank you madam the next question is from our principal madam uh, what is the difference between type a and type b milk yeah type a and type b milk correct uh, type b milk is from native uh, native uh, thing cows and uh, type a is the like, type 1 type 2 actually it is from the breed so naturally the native breed actually there was a uh, brainstorm i attended when during our revi meeting in the indian council of agriculture sir there was a uh, people were discussing our native breed has the uh, lot of uh, milk has contains nutrient contents and also the immunogenic problems also lower so health benefits are more so for that reason they asked uh, like why don't you it's when we proposed as a milk only then they said you go with a uh, native breed cow milk so the cow milk the health benefits are higher and also like it is a native breed Mm -hmm. Yes, I will just like to add here, madam, if I am uh, correct or so. That is, we say uh, some gear, a cow belonging to gear, which is a native cow, whereas uh, the others, mm -hmm. as you said, hybrid. So the milk obtained maybe from them, there there is a difference in the quality, maybe. Yeah. That's what I uh, I feel. Yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, those all are the questions, madam. Thank you very much for uh, your informative session. so to condense it uh, what madam covered today uh, madam told us about transformation of the scientific discoveries which are arising from the lab clinical or population studies into the clinical studies she explained about conversion from the bench to bed side of our innovations uh, madam elaborated on process of new drug discovery and the five fundamental steps which are used in it she also explained about the importance of the patent law and we being the researchers in the academics how can we take advantage of the same she stressed upon the need for the translation research that is she explained the mind to market pathway that is once the idea is generated how it can be taken to the market through various steps and she address she ad, uh, stressed upon the importance of addressing the unmet need uh, so uh, she also explained that uh, we were talking earlier about the interdisciplinary research then the multidisciplinary research now this this is a time for the translational research and uh, madam explained about the commercialization potential scorecard and what are the different factors which we should take into consideration uh, and uh, she uh, she explained that we should have a step wise work plan for converting our ideas into the products in the market the main component of madam's discussion was the case study and each case study was uh, actually work of a phd research scholar and though one case study here might have taken not more than 10 minutes but we understand it is more than 3 to 4 years of the research that gives rise to such a high impact factor publications so her various case studies especially these are based on the uh, actives from the herbal origin and 
uh, that is really great that we always say that we should believe in our culture what is there in our soil we should utilize and then go for synthetic components so most of our case studies or research is based on the uh, materials from the from our soil so her uh, case studies on effective skin care herbal exfoliates where uh, uh, they have used the tree tomato uh, components from the tree tomato then uh, preparation of the snails uh, from isotretinoin using essential oils again not from the synthetic origin then uh, madam also uh, discussed about the non ionic surfactant based nanovesicular systems where they use resveratrol uh, and stearic acid uh, the theosomes that uh, the, the research group had prepared and uh, uh, the other uh, case studies included the immediate release formulations of proton pump inhibitor uh, then about the food fortification with folic acid uh, micronutrients uh, preparation of nano capsules of the same that was discussed then alpha lipoic acid nano capsule 45 ml uh, was one of the important case study which was discussed by madam and madam study also includes uh, drug repurposing that is there are many drugs which are already available and if we utilize the same drug for some other uh, application then the full uh, process of synthesizing a new chemical entity for the given element that can that that those many steps can be reduced that is the advantage of drug repurposing and madam has effectively done this particular study of drug repurposing for some other element uh, and madam has discussed about the novel age appropriate formulation wherein olanzapine uh, was used and madam discussed in detail about the stimuli re responsive drug delivery systems and the importance of developing the drug delivery systems for copd so uh, it was a really very uh, informative session madam and we are really thankful to you for delivering this session taking out you, your uh, time from your busy schedule because we can understand you must be so busy but at these are you are at, uh, you are giving this particular lecture to all our participants we are very thankful to you madam thank you madam thank you madam thank you very much madam. so thank now you. Yeah. I will I will pass on the publication to you. Maybe you can share with the Thank document. you so much. Now yeah. uh, I will just thank you, ma'am. Uh, ICT team uh, to as a token of our appreciation, I will just request ICT team to uh, share the video uh, where we can present virtual memento to madam. Uh, Thank you, madam. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So with this, we thank you, ma'am. Thank you. So with this, we are concluding the session. The participants can wait. I have to dis uh, uh, announce a few things. Okay. So participants okay. can wait. Yeah. 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 With you. your permission, I exit. Thank you. Yes. Thank, thank you. So thank much. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am.